Hi, and welcome to your Niagara News headlines for Monday, August the 7th, provided by Bullet News Niagara and ICFAD TV. I'm Annie Sylvester. Let's check in with your local weather to start things off. Tonight, clear skies, a low of 19. Wednesday, a mix of sun and clouds, a 60% chance of showers in the afternoon with a risk of a thunderstorm, a high of 30. Thursday, more of the same with a chance of showers, a low of 20, a high of 24. Friday, a mix of sun and clouds, a 40% chance of showers, a low of 18, a high of 23. And for Saturday, a 70% chance of rain, a low of 19, a high of 25. And now to some of your top headlines. A 25-year-old man is dead after a head-on collision involving a motorcycle and a van last night around 10.22 p.m. in St. Catharines. Niagara Regional Police say the victim was riding his motorcycle westbound on St. Paul West but failed to negotiate a curb in the road as he crossed over the Burgoyne Bridge headed toward Bellevue Terrace. He then collided head-on with the van driven by a 47-year-old St. Catharines man and was pronounced dead at the scene. The victim's name has not been released and the accident remains under investigation. Niagara Regional Police have laid a second-degree murder charge after responding to calls of a disturbance early Saturday at the Village Family Restaurant on Portage Road in Chippewa. Emergency personnel found 41-year-old John McKenzie of Niagara Falls suffering with trauma to his body, who eventually died at the scene. Charged with second-degree murder is Timothy Brian Nichols, 29 years of age, of Niagara Falls. With NASA's latest space mission now landed on Mars, Brock University researcher Mariek Schmidt is getting down to work in California as part of a team of about 200 international scientists and engineers who will help direct the rover vehicle Curiosity in its search for signs of life. Her participation in the mission is funded by the Canadian Space Agency and she will be one of three Canadians on the research team in Pasadena. She will work with other geochemists and mineralogists studying rocks in the Red Planet's Gale Crater. The $2.5 billion mission is expected to take about 98 weeks, though Schmidt's involvement with the research team may last four years or more in an extended mission. And now congratulations to Michelle Hennison of St. Catharines who won tickets to this week's Buffalo Bills National Football League preseason game from BulletNewsDeals.com. She and a guest will enjoy Thursday's game against the Washington Redskins at Ralph Wilson Stadium, courtesy of Gales Fuels. She did simply by registering with BulletNewsDeals.com. So please go to the site and check out all the great offers and keep an eye out for future free draws. Okay, let's take a break here. More news in a moment. Welcome back. Well, it was a busy long weekend with Canal Days in Port Colborne and the Rib Fest in St. Catharines and the official opening ceremonies of the 130th Royal Henley Regatta. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of that now, as well as a one-on-one -on -one with one of the organizers, Ken Campbell. Let's take a look. This is the 130th uh, anniversary of the regatta. Uh, it's, it was originally rode in Toronto and, and then it came to St. Catharines in 1903 was the first year it was rode here. It's an ideal location. The, uh, the, the course itself is, is a FISA class course. Uh, it's known around the world. It's good for the athletes. Uh, it gives a lot of vantage points for, for spectators to, yes. to watch the event from. We have this year um, close to 500 volunteers working throughout the week, doing everything from working on the dock, pushing the kids off, pulling them in, checking their equipment to make sure it's safe. 500 volunteers, this not, would not happen. Just uh, elated. It's a great evening here in uh, in St. Catharines. We have about uh, 3,000 participants from I think it's 137 cities, about 37 uh, provinces and states, uh, yeah. nine countries. Just a fantastic event here at the Royal Canadian Henley. And again, the weather's uh, picture perfect for it. Good evening, everybody, and welcome again to the opening to the 130th Royal Canadian Henley Regatta. As we start the week off, we can reflect back on uh, the events that took place last week at the Olympics. And uh, 
Canada was well represented at the Olympics. Uh, we're a little bit mixed, but we're pretty pleased with the silver that we did have. And so I congratulate all our future Olympians that are here. This, this year, we're very fortunate uh, through the assistance of the Celebrate Ontario to be uh, awarded uh, a grant to, to help make this a very special year. Some of the things that are going to make it special are what you're going to see a little bit different. Uh, to my right, on your left, we have a water wall, and uh, this is uh, growing art on the water. Some of the other events that you're going to notice as the, the week progresses is uh, coming in for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for finals. Uh, across the way, we will have a large Jumbotron TV that will be uh, put up. And on that, we're going to showcase uh, the starts. We have cameras at the start. And so people in the grandstand will be able to sit and watch the starts of all the races on the screen. <laughs> if you have your handheld uh, phones and uh, you go to the Henry Gata website, there will be a downloadable link where you can actually see results on your phone live. And uh, this is a first for us, and we're pretty excited about this opportunity. And that wraps up today's newscast from everyone here at Bullet News and Nick Fad TV. I'm Annie Sylvester. Have a great night.